On today's episode, we are talking all about Sauron's Harvest, but of course, we are kicking off with our book review, and our book today is The Wheel, A Witch's Path Back to the Ancient Self, written by Jennifer Lane. This is the perfect time of year to start this witchy non-fiction book. This book begins on October 31st at Samhain, where we set off on a journey with Jennifer throughout her year as she navigates exploring ancient festivals and rituals, visits fellow pagans and wild landscapes in search of wisdom and peace. We find Jennifer in the book's beginning at breaking point, working in a fast-paced, toxic working environment that is seriously affecting her mental and physical health. I found myself nodding at many different points in the book that really resonated, Jennifer shows such vulnerability throughout and we follow her as she questions another way of living and being connected. Part of the blurb for this book states, this book is for those who are sick at heart of noise, anger and disconnection. The wheel is full of wise words, crackling rituals and natural beauty. This is a guide to discover how to live fully connected to the natural world while firmly in the 21st century. And I couldn't agree more. This isn't another how to celebrate the Sabbath type book for which there are many. This is a wonderful insight into a witch living throughout the wheel of the year, how she experienced certain Sabbaths and seasons and used them to her advantage to create a life that healed and was viable. This book will definitely appeal to fellow hedge witches and green witches, all witches overall. Jennifer is a former nature writer, so she delves into her experience of the land, but also the wildlife she comes across within the year. I came away from this book realising I needed to get out into nature more than I am and pay attention to what changes are taking place in nature. This for me always feels where like the magic is. Jennifer demonstrates vulnerability within this book. She is a witch after my own heart who shows the reality of juggling life within the muggle world whilst living your best witchy life. Her writing is witty. I chuckled at many a section and it really will give you a different take on how you can work with the seasons, heal your own life, or just simply relate to another witch's experience of the craft. I'll read you a snippet of Jennifer's book in relation to Samhain, just to set the scene and give you an example of her gorgeous writing style. Opening, 31st October. Yarrow for vision, mugwort for foresight. Keridwen, I am ready. Show me your wisdom. Show me what I must do. My eyelids feel heavy with candle wax. The bath water is up to my collarbones, spilling over the ridges to form soft milky pools below my shoulders. In the low light, a drift of mist carries the scent of herbs and the bathroom tiles vibrate with the sound of my exhale until I am in an echo chamber of breath. I really hope the cat doesn't come crashing in. Trick-or-treaters muster in the darkened streets below me. In my mind's eye, I watch their painted faces squeal and cackle under the street lamps. Their parents have worked so hard on the Dracula makeup and bumpy warts. Hold still. Now mums and dads stand a few paces away in their slippers, planning to swipe a few Haribo when the kids are in bed. Once their buckets are filled, the children trundle off down the street to the next house 
like a troop of eerie orphans. This is the usual way of Samhain night, Halloween, the night when the veil between our world and the spirit realms is at its finest. We pull ghoulish faces with the torchlight under our chins. We tell ghost stories under the covers. Children check under their beds more than once tonight. In Mexico, people are making their costumes for the Dia de los Muertos, painting neon white skulls onto paper mache, ready to dance for their past loved ones in a colourful carnival. Across the world, bouquets sit in the hallway, soon to make their way to the graveyard. We might have turned Halloween away from its more macabre traditions and into an orange and black plastic parade, but there is still a darkness to this time of year, one that witches revere. All the witches are celebrating tonight. Join me after the break to talk all about Samhain's harvest. Welcome back, witches. So we already have two episodes of the podcast on Samhain. So for today, I thought, let us have a look at three of the fruits of Samhain, pumpkin, pomegranate, and the apple, and how you can use them in your craft for Samhain, but overall in your spell work, as they have such magical association, much lore, and are linked to many deities. This episode can help you within your magic at any time of the year, as you will see. If you're still rushing around working on your Samhain prep, I see you, I'm there with you. These are free fruits you can easily pick up and make a start with, whether it's in kitchen witchery, for your altar, or within your spell work. And yes, believe it or not, pumpkin is a fruit, apparently. Who knew, as I've just discovered? And with that said, let us start with the pumpkin. So the pumpkin has Latin names of Cucabita pepo and Cucabita maxima. It's linked to the element of water. It has a feminine energy and it is linked to the moon. Its magical properties are banishing, prosperity, protection, repelling, spirit work, curses, lust, wealth, creativity, luck, warding, house blessing, cleansing, abundance, love magic and feminine magic. Pumpkins are a winter squash and one of the oldest domesticated plants having been used as early as 5500 BC. The word pumpkin is said to originate from the ancient Greek word pepon meaning melon. Jack-o'-lanterns were believed to have originated from Ireland, where they would carve lanterns out of turnips or mangle wurzel, often adding grotesque faces to them. The person carving the lantern would either use it to represent spirits and it be used as part of Samhain celebrations to scare people, or it would be crafted to be placed perhaps in a windowsill to ward off evil spirits from the home. Irish immigrants brought this tradition to America, swapping out turnips or beets for the native pumpkin in around the 1600s. It's said prior to this, the indigenous people grew pumpkins as a domesticated crop for at least 7,500 years. The term jack-o'-lantern originates from sightings of unexplained lights over peat bogs, marshes and swamps that were referred to as will-o'-the-wisp or ignis fatus, which is Latin for giddy flame. Will-o'-the-wisps are often found in English and European folklore. These small, strange, eerie lights were said to appear as a flickering lantern or lamp and would trick travellers in the dark to follow them. These lights were often attributed to the fae, ghosts or elemental spirits. 
In Swiss folklore, there is a tradition of leaving a bowl of milk or cream out for Jack of the Bowl, a helpful house spirit often referred to as a brownie. One variation of this is that if you left out a bowl of sweet cream for Jack of the Bowl each night, he would lead your herd of cattle to graze in a place unsafe for humans, but the cattle would be safe. Pumpkins were once a necessity in sustaining families through long, harsh winters. They can keep for up to 90 days and be cooked in a variety of ways, and they are in season September through to December. The flesh and the seeds were often used in traditional medicine as an anti-parasitic agent and a high-fibre dietary supplement. So here are some ways that you might want to use pumpkin within your craft. Carve protection sigils and symbols into your pumpkins and leave them by your door to ward off negativity. You might want to carve a pentagram on your pumpkin for spiritual and physical protection. Use pumpkin seeds and make prosperity oils. You could use almond or olive oil as a carrier oil. Dry roast the seeds and add seven seeds to a charm bag for prosperity. Carry on your person for seven days. The fertile abundance of the seeds inside the pumpkin are ideal for any spells, rituals and charms relating to abundance, success, wealth, gratitude and fertility. Orange is the colour of the sacral chakra, a potent colour for the fire of creation and it represents personal power. Keep a dried pumpkin seed in your wallet or purse to attract money, financial security and general prosperity. Due to the roundness and shape of the pumpkin and their links to abundance and harvest, they are the perfect addition to fertility spells. Use pumpkin stems for wishing or prosperity spells throughout the wheel of the year. The stems dry and cure quickly. Pumpkins connote fairy tales and fanciful thinking. Use this energy in your workspace to help you generate deeper creative ideas. You might want to make a bird feeder out of a pumpkin to connect with the spirit of fire with the pumpkin and air with the birds. You might want to encourage birds to your garden doing this. So when you see a bird on the feeder or near it, you might want to say a blessing, send them off with a wish or prayer to carry skyward. This is a really good practice to do if you work with either Keridwen or Rhiannon, who both have heavy association with birds. Consider and use your pumpkin as a magic portal, this Samhain, to connect with spirits. Carve out your pumpkin and perhaps burn inside it on a charcoal disc protection herbs such as rosemary to turn away negativity from your doorstep. You might want to leave your pumpkin as an offering following Samhain for the woodland spirits. But of course, it is a great food for deer and small creatures. Just make sure that there isn't anything yucky in it like candle wax or anything else. And lastly, on November 1st, before sunrise, write a wish on a piece of paper and place it inside your jack-o'-lantern and bury it in your garden for the witch's new year. So I have a Samhain spell jar that you might wish to try. This ritual can be carried out at Samhain, a great time to consider our fears in keeping with the Sabbath and stepping into the witch's new year. But feel free to work this at any time you need to banish some deep inner fears. For this, you will need a jar with a seal or lid, mugwort, cinnamon, pumpkin seeds and dried apple slices. A crystal that resonates with you that supports you work through fear. So perhaps black tourmaline, obsidian, labradorite or hematite, a black candle and a carrier oil such as almond or olive oil and a plate. So cleanse your jar however you might, you might want to smoke cleanse it. Add some of the herbs gradually, a pinch or as much as you see fit of each. You might want to add more ingredients dependent on how big your inner fears feel. 
then seal your jar. Carve into your black candle the word fear as many times as you can upon its surface. Anoint your candle with the olive or almond oil from the top to the bottom of the candle in order to banish. Witches have many different variations on banishing or calling in when it comes to anointing. So do this as you see fit. For me, when I'm calling something in, I will go from the bottom of the candle to the wick. When I'm banishing, I go from the top of the candle to the bottom, but you do you. Mix some of the same herbs you used for your spell jar together on a plate or chopping board and roll your candle across all the herbs so as much covers the outside as possible. Once your candle is ready, hold your candle in your hands and visualize all your fears. So project them all onto your candle and visualize your candle holding all of them so that they are no longer within you. Take as much time as you need to see or feel the fear leave you. So melt the bottom of the candle just enough to affix the candle to the center of your plate. Place the black candle on the center of the plate. Continue the visualization to project all your fear and anxiety into the candle so that the black candle absorbs it. Visualize one more time to put all your fears and anxieties into the candle. Then light the candle. Make sure you're not a virgin. No, I'm joking. Speak or chant the following words or words that resonate with you. It's giving Hocus Pocus vibes on Samhain. Fear be gone without a trace. Confidence overtakes in thy place. That I covet is on the other side of fear. I will summon all I desire here. So mote it be. Place the candle in a safe place away from children, pets and drafts, windows, and let it burn until the candle goes out on its own. Keep an eye on the candle during the spell to make sure it burns safely. Keep the spell jar on your altar for as long as you need it. You might want to visit your altar, pick it up, shake it, should any related feelings arise in regards to, you know, if you get any sort of feelings of fear come up again. Keep your crystal on your person for support until you feel you no longer need it. I will link in the show notes a grimoire page for the Sow and Spell Jar that you can access. This gives you an example of one of the grimoire pages that we have in Patreon. So let us have a look at the pomegranate, which goes under many different names, Latin names such as Punica, Granatum, Malum, Punicum, but also Carthage apple, Grenadilla, Malicorio, Pound garnet. It's linked to the element of fire and air. Heavily debated whether or not it was a masculine or feminine energy. It's linked to the planets Mercury, Venus, and Pluto, linked to the zodiac Scorpio, deities Persephone, Ceres, Astarte, and Sekhmet. Magical properties are fertility, abundance, wealth, prosperity, luck, wisdom, protection, connecting with the underworld, rebirth, feminine magic, blood magic, and womb magic. Considered a fruit symbolic of the womb within certain cultures, yet contradictorily, the pomegranate holds much association with death and the underworld too, sometimes being referred to as the fruit of the dead. Perfect for Samhain. Pomegranate represents the transition of connecting life to the time of death and the acknowledgement that death always brings new life. The pomegranate binds us to the underworld, but is also the symbol for fertility due to its association of being able to create new life. In the ancient world of the Mediterranean cultures, it is the very fruit that created the connection to death. Persephone is the goddess most associated with the pomegranate and her descent into the underworld. She is said to eat six seeds of the pomegranate food of the dead, which ultimately binds her to Hades, damning her to be trapped beneath the earth as queen of the dead. Yet it is also said that the underworld offered Persephone much knowledge 
and provided her with balance despite it being a scary place. Some say that the amount of seeds Persephone consumed represented the duration of time she would need to stay in the land of the dead, one seed for each month. In some retellings, it is three seeds, and in others, six. Pomegranates fruit in the autumn and winter. They originate in South Asia and are cultivated around the world. Due to the abundance of seeds they hold, they are ideal for fertility and wealth magic. The pomegranate is to some said to be of a masculine energy, yet the pomegranate radiates much feminine energy, similar to the Empress card in tarot, fertile and passionate, akin to the High Priestess card. The fruit has a hidden, profoundly mystical side. Its law and magic has captivated many ancient witches, mystics, and religious types for millennia, reminding us that to glimpse beyond the veil is to see mysteries. The consequence of this being, you can never return to the bliss of ignorance again. It is the perfect fruit to add to your altar or within your magic work upon Samhain for this reason. It reminds us of the gifts and magic in the unseen world. Pomegranate's name comes from the medieval Latin word ponum, meaning apple, and granitum meaning seeded. It's associated with good luck and fortune. Since antiquity, a tradition central to Greek culture is to open a pomegranate upon New Year and at weddings. This is seen as inviting fate's good fortune for the forthcoming journey, new life and rebirth. So you might want to use pomegranate juice as ink when you need to write petitions or spells, especially relating to divination, luck, wishes, abundance and fertility spells. Eat a pomegranate with a strong wish in mind. The fruit is considered a magical aid that will help grant your wish. Dry and grind pomegranate skin to make money incense to attract wealth to you. Pomegranate juice's blood-like appearance can be used as a substitute for blood in ritual or spells. Drink the juice or eat the seeds whilst drawing down the moon. Meditate and ask for guidance, knowledge and wisdom. And eat the seeds before you make a wish to aid in it coming true. So I have a ritual you might wish to try this Samhain to connect with your ancestors. This comes from the website flyingthehedge.com. However, you could use this at any time that you feel the need to connect with them. Samhain is, of course, the perfect time to work with spirits and travel between realms. This ritual is designed to open the doors between our realm and the realm of our ancestors to communicate with them this Samhain. For this, you will need a pomegranate that is sliced open, a black candle, a white candle, obsidian, mugwort, charcoal, a hot plate for the charcoal, lighter or matches, and your book of shadows or wherever you record your magical workings. Begin by cleansing your working area with the method of your choice. The author states that she uses cedar because it works to remove negativity, but also invites good spirits. This step is said to be really important, as of course you'll be inviting spirits into your sacred space. After you are certain your sacred space is cleansed, feel free to call the quarters or cast the magical circle, whatever it is that you do to start. And of course, take any necessary precautions, protect yourself in whatever way you see fit during this ritual. After you are certain your space is clean, charge the obsidian with your intent. Hold it in your hand, close your eyes and say, I charge this obsidian to bridge the gap between our realms and those of my ancestors. May it act as a conduit so my ancestors may speak their truth on this night. May it act as a door and a guiding light for those I seek. Aid in my message so they may understand me and that I may understand them in return. Put the black obsidian directly in front of you or hold it during the ritual. 
extract free pomegranate seeds and eat them while saying, fruit of the underworld and blood of my ancestors, help bridge this realm with the land of the dead. May the living and deceased freely communicate this night. Next, place the black candle on the left of your altar or work surface, the white candle on the right, and the remaining pomegranate halves in between them. So, black candle, pomegranate, white candle. Light the charcoal, and when the coal is hot, place some mugwort on it. Then light the black candle, and then your white candle. Move the black candle to the right of the white candle while saying, On this sour night when the veil is thin and the spirits come forth, I call upon my ancestors. I seek guidance as the wheel of the year comes full circle and the earth rests. I call to thee, the honoured and well-intended ancestors of my family line, to join me here and now at my altar to guide me on my path. Accept this offering of fruit along with my love and deepest gratitude. May it please you. You could tweak the wording for this if you are not working this spell at Samhain easily. Bow your head and allow them to partake in the offering. Sit quietly and listen for any messages they may have for you. You can do this by closing your eyes or staring into the flame of the black candle. Write down anything you see or hear during this time. Some things may not make sense right now, but get them down anyway. To close the ritual, thank your ancestors for coming and ask them to leave by saying, thank you ancestors who came to commune with me this sour night. I offer my sincerest thanks and hope the offering was to your liking. You may depart and return to your resting places. Do not linger. Obsidian black as night, guide the souls who were called today back home. This rite is now closed. Snuff out the candles and leave the offering on your altar overnight. The following morning, place the pomegranate outside for the wildlife. They will appreciate your gift. You may feel exhausted after this ritual. Ground and centre yourself and eat something before taking a shower. Spirits often leave behind a heaviness that should be washed away. So have a shower to make sure that anything remaining on your person is removed. After your shower, you might want to spend some time analysing what you wrote down during the ritual. So I love this. On the website, she gives a section on why you did certain things within the ritual. So a breakdown of it. Understanding the whys of a ritual are just as important as performing it. It helps you understand the process so you can modify the spell or ritual to suit your needs and helps guide you to write your own. Again, so if you're not going to use this at Samhain, this gives you a good way to break it down and reconstruct it to work it how you want, using the wording you want at a time you want. Let's start with the first step, the obsidian. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that has cooled so quickly, crystallization is unable to occur. It has a long and rich history throughout a number of cultures around the world. But one thing it has in common is its association with the underworld. Because of its shiny appearance, which reflects the shadows of the objects and people that stand before it, the peoples of ancient Mexico named it Ixtli, after the god Texcatlipoca, meaning smoking mirror. Believing the shadowy reflections were connected to the afterlife and second sight. Furthermore, it originates from magma deep within the earth, further connecting it to the underworld. Because of these features, obsidian is the perfect crystal to act as a bridge between our realm and the land of the dead, as it is naturally and magically connected to the underworld. To add to this, obsidian is also associated with protection. Historically, obsidian was used as spearheads and arrowheads, as it is relatively brittle and therefore easy to shape. 
And being black, a color traditionally associated with protection, grounding and banishment adds to its use in this ritual as the obsidian is not only used to pull spirits to our realm, but also to banish them back to theirs at the end of the ritual. Next, we come to the star of the show, the pomegranate. It doesn't play a big part in this ritual, but it is essential as it helps open you up to receive messages. So you're probably aware of the story of Persephone and Hades. To give you a brief summary, Hades steals Persephone away to the underworld. When she is there, she eats some pomegranate seeds and this binds her to the underworld until Zeus, Hades and Demeter are able to strike a deal. This means that Persephone will spend half the year with her mother and half the year with Hades. So half a year on the earth, half a year in the underworld. As a result, pomegranates are strongly associated with being the fruit of the underworld and eating them is said to connect you to that realm and aid in spirit communication. They are also associated with blood and therefore death because the fruit bleeds when you cut into it. In general, it makes for an excellent offering to the dead as well. Mugwool is a traditional herb associated with spirit communication. The smoke is a mild entheogen and helps induce a trance-like state. As such, it is the perfect herbal incense to use during spirit communication and won't cause a traditional high that could make communication difficult. Furthermore, smoke is associated with air and communication so that your messages can travel to your ancestors and their messages to you. The black and white candles represent the underworld with the black candle and our world with the white candle. This is a symbolic representation as black is associated with death and white with life. When you move the black candle to the right of the white candle, you are pulling the land of the dead to the present realm and bridging that connection. If you're looking to break this spell, unfortunately, it's said that this isn't a spell to be broken. There is nothing to break. However, if spirits linger, ask them to leave and cleanse your space again. And lastly, let's look at the apple, Latin name Malus Domestica. Other names it's gone by, fruit of the other world, fruit of the gods, fruit of the underworld, silver branch and tree of love. It's linked to the element of water, feminine energy, planet Venus, zodiac Capricorn and Taurus, Celtic deities Morgan Le Fay, Keridwen, Olwen, Norse deities Idun, Freya, Greek deities Aphrodite, Apollo, Hera, Gaia, Athena and Zeus, Roman deities Pomona, Diana, Venus, Cupid, Jupiter, Middle Eastern deities Ishtar, Shekinah, Astarte and Ashtaroth, magical properties protection, prosperity, abundance, love, longevity, creativity, fertility, Immortality, attracting the Fae, beauty, divination, psychic connections, knowledge, wisdom, death, healing, and garden magic. The apple is the ancient symbol of life, death, rebirth, and wisdom. They represent immortality and are closely linked to the underworld. The apple is one of the most consumed fruits worldwide, a member of the Rosakai family that includes roses, pears, plums, cherries, and even strawberries. Apple trees originate from Central Asia from a wild species called Malus civisi that still exists today, although currently is considered vulnerable for extinction. The Celts saw the apple as knowledge, magic, prophecy and of the Celtic underworld and acted as a bridge between the living and the dead. The Gauls viewed the apple tree as sacred as the oak tree. The Celts viewed it as one of their seven holy trees. Birch, alder, willow, 
oak, holm oak, hazel and apple tree. The apple tree is the oldest cultivated tree in Europe. The apple tree is the most common host to mistletoe, therefore sacred in Druidic law. In Celtic times, apples were seen as a fruit of the gods. Prayers and blessings were given to the trees. The apple tree was believed to hold the power to open the gates to the realms of the Fae, particularly the island of apples, which is said to be home to Morgan Le Fay, the fairy queen. Legend has it that an apple branch that has buds, flowers, maturing apples and ripe apples all on it may be the entrance to the underworld. In Celtic mythology, this is known as the silver bough and gives it the powers of Avalon and immortality of the fairy realms. Further folklore states infant fae are born from the centre of an apple and if you cut an apple in half you can see the fetal shape of their womb. Falling asleep under an apple tree is meant to transport you to the fairy realm although you may not return for many years. In the Irish story of Conla of the Fiery Hair, Conla, son of Con, the King Connell is said to be named after, that gets confusing. Who's he when he's at home? Anyway, was seduced by a fairy maiden who gave him an apple which, once eaten, would replenish itself, becoming whole again. Conla ate nothing but this apple for a whole month, after which time the fairy maiden reappeared. Eating the magical apple had given Conla a powerful longing for the fairy, and he joined her on the crystal boat to the other world a magical island where the trees bore a never-ending supply of the fruit, giving him everlasting youth, but forbidding him from ever returning to the land of man. A similar myth occurs in Druid folklore, where the character Bran is enticed to the other world by a magical maiden brandishing a musical apple branch, and in the Arthurian legend, Avalon, the land of the fairies and the dead, ruled by Morgan le Fay, means Isle of Apples. Merlin was also said to work in a grove of apple trees, the fruit of which, when eaten, gave him the power of prophecy. In ancient Silesia, now part of Poland, the apple tree was a dream tree. Sleeping under the tree could induce dreams or merely placing an apple under her pillow on New Year's Eve would induce a midnight dream in a young woman of her future husband. In Greek mythology, the apple tree was at the centre of the garden of the Hesperides, a tree belonging to Hera, bearing magical golden fruit, which gave the gift of immortality to those who ate it. In Norse tradition, the apple is the tree of immortality. The goddess Idun was the keeper of the apples, which she fed to the Norse gods and goddesses to keep them forever young. Apple wands were also used in Norse love rituals. To the Norse, apples represented long life, wisdom and love. On the dark side, in medieval fairy tales such as Snow White, the queen, a powerful sorceress, used a magic apple to curse the young princess into terminal sleep. The medieval church believed enchanted apples could be given to a victim to cause demonic possession. In Ireland, the quest for wisdom was realised by pursuing the white doe under a wild apple tree. The sacred druid plant mistletoe is often found on apple trees, making it an especially holy tree to the druids along with the oak. In the Irish druid tradition, the silver bough is cut from a magical apple tree, where silver apple-shaped bells played a mystical tune, which could lull people into a trance state. Druids can make contact with the other world during a trance enhanced by the silver apple bough. The apple tree is closely linked to druids in their aspect as magicians and shamans. The tree is often used when the druid undergoes a magical transformation or journeys into the other world. 
In the voyage of Bran, an otherworldly woman appears with an apple branch laden with bells, entrancing Bran with wondrous tales of the otherworld. So enraptured is he by this damsel with the magical apple branch that he sets sail immediately for the enchanted shores, having epic adventures on his journey. In Druid lore, the essence of three sacred apples growing on the tree of knowledge came from three drops that fell from Keridwen's cauldron, which correspond with the Druid's most holy symbol, the three rays of light. So apples are often a part of the dumb supper, a silent feast of the dead given on Samhain Eve. I came across a variation of the dumb supper. I'm not sure if this is one that you are familiar with. So participants set a place, but with broken crockery at the head of the dining table for the ancestors. Not a word is spoken during the dumb supper. It was the broken crockery bit that got me. So it said that some ceremonies, the servers would walk in backwards and never look directly at the place set for the dead. After the feast is over, the leftover food and broken crockery is ceremonially taken outside into the woods for the spirits to consume on this wild Halloween night. This is, of course, a powerful ceremony of communion with the dead. It said that any apples on the tree unharvested after Samhain are left for the spirits. In the UK, it is customary to wassail the oldest apple tree in the orchard on Twelfth Night, which is either January 6th or Old Twelfth Night, which is January 17th, to ward off evil spirits and beseech the trees to produce a fine harvest of apples the following spring. The oldest tree is named Apple Tree Man and is the guardian of all the trees in the orchard. There are many traditions connected with this rite, including shooting through the branches to ward off evil spirits and pouring apple cider through the roots. Toast soaked in apple cider is placed in the branches for the robins, who embody the spirit of the apple trees. Celebrants drink warm cider and sing traditional wassail songs. Wassail probably comes from the Anglo-Saxon words was how, meaning good health. Wassailing still takes place on the old 12th night, January 17th, in Somerset, and again, the last apple is often left on the tree at harvest time, but in this occasion for the apple tree man to ensure a good harvest the next year. Apple wands are the perfect tools to invoke any of the gods or goddesses associated with the apple. If you are particularly attracted to a specific god or goddess, you might want to only use your apple wand when you are calling them in and working with them. So we kind of touched on this earlier in regards to the dumb supper, but you could also use the apple wand to visit the shades of the dead who reside in Avalon. So at Samhain, prepare a dumb supper for the participants, set a plate, cup and utensils at the head of the table. Using your wand, draw an invoking pentagram and call forth the shades of the dead by name from Avalon, inviting them to share the feast. Serve the dead a portion of everything that is offered at the feast. So they also reference this tradition also where you walk in backwards, never look directly at the place set for the dead. But they go on to say that afterwards you place the food and drink from their plate outside for the pukas. So in other traditions, the crockery is broken and buried afterwards or left in the woods. There are so many variations of this. You may want to include an apple in your feast in honour of the Isle of Apples or use them upon your altar as, of course, they symbolise the fruit of the dead. This can be a great way to honour your ancestors and welcome them to feast with you during the Samhain Sabbath. The Celts buried apples in graves as food for the dead as they believed the apple was associated with rebirth. Petrified remains have been found from over 7,000 years ago in Europe. 
In Latin, the word for apple is malum, and this could be in part due to common Western belief that the apple was the forbidden fruit of the Garden of Eden. The word for evil was malum. An old superstition was that eating an apple without rubbing it first was a symbolic gesture of challenging the devil. The apple tree reminds us to remove all blocks within our life that have not been serving us. Show fearlessness as you move forward in new life experiences. It's a giver of life, a sacred and magical source of food and nourishment, a symbol of immortality and abundance. So in regards to spell work, you might want to pour a libation of apple juice during rituals to ask for the gift of insight or to seek help with life decisions. Use apples in spells relating to temptation. You might want to bury an apple with a symbol of your vice. Light a candle every night for a full moon cycle to support earnest efforts at breaking a negative habit. Add apple peels to a large cauldron or pot of water along with cinnamon, allspice and ginger to infuse your home with romance. Wands made from apple wood are ideal for use in spells relating to love, fertility, harmony, blessing harvests, rituals, charms and amulets. So I have an old spell to choose a suitor should one have several and cannot choose. I mean, come on, this could be great old school witchcraft solutions for modern day problems. For example, you know, if you've got to decide who to go on a Tinder date with and you cannot choose, is it Brad, Chad, Keith, Gary, Jay? All you need to do is remove the seeds from an apple, throw them one by one onto a fire and say the name of each suitor as you throw a seed. If a seed pops on the fire, that is the suitor you should marry or in this case, go on your Tinder date with. Include apple seeds in protection spells, charm bags or amulets. You definitely might want one of those if you're going out dating. (laughs) It's wild out there, witches. Garden magic. Plant an apple tree in your garden to bless your home for prosperity. Apples symbolize growth and abundance and blessings to come. Applewood branches with blossoms can be used in fertility spells and love spells. So a simple love spell is to hold an apple in your hands, warm it and infuse it with your intention of love. Once infused with your intention, give it to the person you are interested in. Come on, you've got to take it along on that Tinder date. If they eat it, the love infused in the apple will be returned to you. Anyone I went on a date with that I gave an apple to would instantly be suspicious. They wouldn't be thinking good things. Anyway, serve apple pie with cinnamon to improve family relations. Apples for love and cinnamon for healing. Samhain has historically been referred to as the feast of apples. So you might want to use some upon your altar for the Sabbath. And some witches consider the apple to be a symbol of the soul. More garden magic. So if you have apple trees after harvesting, bury 13 apple leaves in your garden to ensure and increase the health of your garden. Burn apple blossoms as incense. It's symbolic of love, healing and immortality. The blossoms can also be added to love sachets, brews and incenses or infused in melted pink wax when making candles for love. That is all I have for you today, witches. Of course, I just want to say have an amazing Samhain. May the door of the coming year open for you to peace, happiness and quiet contentment. That is one of my favourites. That is an old Scots Samhain blessing. Sending you lots and lots of witchy love. (laughs) 